First thing I'm gonna do is take off my Rolex. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can afford it, but I can't afford to fix it. What's up, everybody? It's your coach. Finally, it's here. How to break in a first baseman in one day. Man, I can't thank you guys for the love. If you haven't, subscribe. If you haven't, leave a comment. If you haven't, thumbs up or thumbs down. I could care less. I'm here to help. I'm here to help you guys, not myself, you guys. Whatever you guys need, comment below. I got you. I respond to everybody as quick as I can. It's your coach. Big shout out to my man Nick for doing this. Any questions on anything, hit it below. I got you. And now, the much, and I mean much, anticipated video on how to break in a first baseman. This one's special to me because I'm a lefty and I played first base my whole life. So the first baseman is me. You're seeing here a custom Rawlings Coach HP, one of one. Second edition glove. First one was Pro Preferred. This one is Heart of the Hide glove. Without further delay, the video on how to break in a first baseman in one day, you've been dying to see. Here we go. What's up, everybody? It's your coach. Man, what, what, what a crazy run it's been. I also knew that one of the reasons why this works is because that's his passion, man. He likes breaking stuff in. He loves to help people out, which is, which is big. And we got a ton of questions that we're here to help. So once again, my boy Nick back here. What's going on, guys? Nick, I'm going to give you a couple questions. You fire off what you think. We'll do it the same way Absolutely. of the questions that we've got. And okay, number one, a lot of people are up north asking about the car with the heat. They don't have that option. What options do you have? I think we said something about putting it under the yeah. mattress or something. So I'm gonna give you a little backstory first really quick. Um, I got into breaking gloves back in the minor leagues. It wasn't much of an issue as a kid because as a kid, you had to go to a, a sporting goods store. You got to grab and feel all these gloves and get the one that felt the best and just beat it until it was ready to go. Once I got into pro ball and your agent starts sending you these gloves, besides them being hard, the shape in them never came good. So I'm like, man, expensive glove, super nice glove, but look at that shape, no pocket, you know, what do I do? So, you know, I try to figure out how I can remold a glove. And that's where the whole hot water, you know, came into, into play. The first mistake that I did, and it worked for me because I didn't really care, I used to dip the gloves inside the boiling water. Uh, back in the therapy room, they, they had this boiling water where they had these, these packs for, for muscles and all that, and I would stick the glove in there. And I would realize that the hot water would basically give me a, 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 an empty canvas where I can reshape it however I wanted. So what I would do is, I would you know mold it to how I would like, and then I would get an ace bandage and I would wrap it up and just throw it in my locker for a couple of days. When I would take off the ace bandage off it, it had a beautiful form, exactly the form I wanted. Hard as a rock, but beautiful form. The reason I mention that is the heat, the reason I use the heat is just for me to have it ready that same day to get air dry that quick. You don't need it. I mean, it's great to have a glove broken in one day, but if you take two days, it's gonna dry out by itself. The mistake that I did was dip it in the hot water. That's where the weight kind of changed a little bit, made it slightly more heavy. But with the technique that we're using now, we're not submerging the glove in the water. We're simply letting the hot water hit it on the outside, hit it on the inside, just so we can manipulate the leather a little bit better. Okay, so we're not submerging it in there. It's not soaking up all this water. It's just getting wet. It's the same as if you were spit on it, sweat on it, you're playing on a rainy day. It's just surface water. Nothing's gonna happen to it. Again, if you use a glove like Rawlings, it's incredible leather, guys. <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to mess this up, all right? So that's the main reason for, for, the, for the windshield and the heat is to have it ready that same day. But two days, somewhere in your house where it can hold the form and you're fine. Nick, the pancake stuff. 
Some people said because you're so strong that you're making it flap like a pancake. What do you think about that? Well, so right now this glove, I, I, can't, I can't flip this glove right now, right? Um, and I can't flip it just because it, it's, it's hard leather. Once I wet it, I'm gonna manipulate it better. Guys, I, I, I weigh 190 pounds. Okay, I'm, I, I work out every day, no big deal. But my fingers are not that big, you know? So, so I cannot get a glove and, and, and pancake it off, off the back. I, I, I can't. Okay, so I, I promise you, I don't do any finger bench presses or anything like that. I got regular fingers like everybody else. Uh, I have a desk job, so I don't really, you know, work in construction with hard hands or anything. So just take my word on that. The, the flap comes from breaking in the hinges. And another thing is, I put two of my fingers at the end of the pocket in the, in the pinky hole. Uh, growing up, that was a big no-no. You were supposed to put all your fingers in all the slots and then you out this finger not to get the little feet up in here. But with my brother now playing pro ball, he's like, man, maybe, maybe nine out of every 10 guys that I play with, they all put their fingers two in the pinky slot and one over. Something that, you know, when I was playing, only outfielders and first basemen would do it because outfielders wanted the gloves to close like that, just like first basemen. But you know what? Why wouldn't an infielder want the, the gloves to close like that too? So again, if I would go all five fingers in each slot, it's very hard to do. Once I go two fingers and I do this little uh, Star Trek shape to it, man, it's, it's cake, it's super easy. Nick, with this glove being a first base glove, before you get into it, what difference are you gonna do? What different things are you gonna do? So uh, on the first hit, okay, all my gloves, and I said this in the last post, I want a deep pocket, extremely deep, deep, deep pocket. With a first baseman glove, even more so. Um, it's lefty, most lefties have that funny shape to it. I'm still gonna make it almost like a taco. In fact, the nickname for the first base glove is a taco, because you wanna shape it like a taco. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna create the pocket, but I'm gonna create the pocket a little bit higher, more in, in the webbing of the, of the glove, just to catch those, those balls in the, in the webbing real deep. But again, Nickname for a first base glove is a taco, so you want to make sure you kind of create that taco shape to it. Create that deep pocket, maybe not so much in the palm, a little bit more in the pocket. It's almost going to be like a, like a highlight nest. And you'll see it now when we get into it, where I usually create that bubble here. With this glove, I'm going to create the bubble back here. Let's do it. So step number one, hot water. I got the shower running. Let's get it going. I'm only wetting it until the, the outside changes colors a little bit. You can see how it's getting a little bit dark right there, this still light. So as the water gets into it, it gets a little bit dark. I don't have to do this if I just want to break in the glove, but I'm not just trying to break in the glove, I'm trying to remold the glove from factory. The, the main reason for the hot water is not so much the breakup as it is to, to make the glove uh, be, be, be able to manipulate it to create the shape that I want. First thing we'll do here is just pop it inside out. Okay. Oh, you destroyed the glove. Look at that. No, oh, man. We're just trying to loosen up. Remember, these are made by machines most of the time. The machines wind these leather up real hard. You know, let's just stretch out the, the leather the leather laces, right? And then let's just start playing with this right here. This is the part that I like to break in, the, the hinges, which is the two hinges out here. Okay. Pop it back over, going back to the hinges. Especially for kids, you know, the hard part about the glove is, is closing the glove. And it's really hard if this is tight. So this is the part that I really want to become, you know, soft and, and flexible. Just rubbing it together. I'm gonna do it in slow motion so you can see what I'm doing, right? Just doing it all over. I'm doing it slow right there so you can see. Okay, 
and then I just do it a little bit faster and put more tension on it. All right. Yeah, it's real soft. I'm gonna pop it in one more time because we want this stuff to be ready in an hour for a game. This is already 10 times softer. Now comes the big part for me, which is creating the pocket. The first thing I'm gonna do is put on the glove. Smack it a little bit. As I smack it, I'm kind of creating that, that shape right there that I want, the, the taco. So this is already good right there. I can put it to dry, but that's not a big enough pocket. Right now you see the webbing, how it's flat back here. When I'm done now with a, with a mallet, you're gonna see a bubble back here. So there's gonna be a nice big bubble on that, on that webbing. And that's where the pocket's gonna get, gonna, the ball's gonna get lost in. First thing I'm gonna do is take off my Rolex. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can afford it, but I can't afford to fix it. See how that, that bubble's popping right there in the webbing? That's for the ball to get lost in there, right? Keep on that tackle shape right there. So, okay, with the shape that I want. Nick, let's talk to Mallet real quick. A lot of people had questions about Mallet. I see you did a little customized edition of yours I there. did. I did a customized one because these mallets that you find in any sporting goods store, they're great. They're perfect. But since I beat them into, into the concrete, they split on me a lot, right? So uh, instead of keep on breaking these, I had a buddy of mine just create a metal rod with a ball on it. You know, th this is unnecessary. Th this does a better job properly and it's easier because it's a lot lighter, but this looks so much cooler, you know? So it's the cool factor. All right. So we have, we have a deep pocket, right? We have the deep pocket. But, you know, I'm like, eh. If something here I don't like, let me beat that a little bit. I'm like, yeah, man. That looks almost picture perfect for first base glove. Like, it looks like you can catch a basketball in there, right? So if I just leave it like this, good chance everything's gonna go back to its original, uh, original place. So when I do that pocket, I wanna now hold that pocket there with that tension so it can dry like that. If it dries like that, it's gonna stay like that, right? So that's why I pinch it in the windshield of the car. Because once I pinch it in the windshield of the car, it's gonna hold that mold right there until the gloves dry. Nick, so, Nick one more time, so say that again. So you're putting this part in the middle of the, of on the, the first, wedding. Yeah, on the first base glove, you know, I'm creating that big bubble, right? But that bubble, <laughs> if I take the mallet out, and just leave the glove there, the glove starts drying back to normal, right? So I pinch it into the windshield like that so it can dry with that shape. Once it dries in that shape, it's gonna keep that shape. So if I'm up north and I don't have the windshield, I'll get a sock, an ace bandage, whatever, and I'll just wrap it around the glove to hold that. Maybe put it underneath my mattress, pinched, underneath a sofa, anywhere pinched, so it can dry like that. Now, when the glove dries, it's not 100% ready. In fact, you might still find it a little bit stiff. You're like, man, it's still hard. Grab it, expand it a little bit because the, the, the layers will be a little bit hard because of the water. Expand it, throw it in your hand, slap on your leg a little bit, and now you just start playing with a mallet. So it's already a lot better, and we haven't even done the process. My only problem is that if I just leave it like this, it's gonna go back to its original shape. And now it's a little bit heavy because it's holding a little bit of water. So you need it to air dry. But 
theoretically, I can play a game already with this if I wanted to. It's a little bit heavier, the shape's gonna leave. So that's why I'm gonna put my magnet right where I want it, pinch it somewhere. See you later. Day two of the glove. Got my man Nico back there. Look at this, ready to go. Already broken in. Perfect. Not too stiff, not too soft either. I love it. It's gonna throw me some here so you guys can see how quick in 24 hours we're ready to play some baseball. I don't think get behind me. Nice and clean right there, the thing. Do a couple more. Can't even feel it. Very good. Two more. Beautiful. One more. There we go, right there. It's your coach. 24 hours. Any words for the people? Anything you gotta say, man? No, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna continue posting some content about gloves. Uh, we got the catcher's one coming up, a lot of people. Coming up, uh, different little tricks about shaping uh, for kids mostly, you know, we deal a lot with youth athletes, so little things to make their game a little bit easier. We're gonna bring the scale so we can try it too. Absolutely, have... absolutely. We're gonna bring the scale for the catcher's gloves so you can see that what it weighs out of the box and what it weighs after this process, it's gonna be the same even after wetting it a little bit. It's your coach out here with the big dog. One day, you guys wanted it, you guys got it. Here we go.